Good morning, Redeemer Church family. I am praying for each of you on this Thursday. I hope that your day is off to a great start. I pray that this study today in 1 Peter chapter 2 will really focus on verse 5, that it'll help you to focus on Jesus, to think of him. And as a result, you'll experience an increase, a multiplication compared to yesterday of grace, peace, hope, patience, all of these things that are yours in Christ. We're going to read today verses 4, 5, and 6 but really focus just on verse five and really verse five and six, I've divided into two parts. So we'll finish it, Lord willing, tomorrow. Let's read. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. So we we remember here that Peter has moved from talking about how we behave for the good of Christian community to now talking about the very nature of that Christian community. And the first thing that we see is that he says in verse 5 that those who are in Christ are like living stones. Well, who is the living stone? Jesus is. So if you are in Christ today, you are like Jesus. We would each do well to pause here and just reflect on that. What does that mean? What are the implications of that? When God the Father looks at you, he doesn't see one who's clothed with this sin-stained clothing. No, he sees one who's been clothed with the righteousness of Christ. So in that way, you are like Christ. You've obtained his righteousness. You've obtained his purity. You've been purified on account of your obedience and submission to the word of God. This word that was preached to you, Peter says. We also see that Peter here is not talking about an individual dwelling place for God. As in, he's not talking about God dwelling in an individual. I think in the Western church, we tend to probably overemphasize the individual aspect of God's dwelling place. For example, we've so taken to heart uh, Paul's reminder in 1 Corinthians in chapter 3 and chapter 6, where he says, do you not know? I remember that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And maybe we've so overemphasized that, that then we fail to grasp the fact that God also dwells in a spiritual temple that is being built up with individual living stones. I don't want to at all diminish the significance of God's spirit dwelling in you. In fact, you are only a living stone because this living God dwells in you and has caused you to be born again. I've put some scripture below here that you can see just to be reminded of this fact that God's spirit dwells in you. You are the dwelling place, the temple of the Holy Spirit. But I want to be careful not to so overemphasize the individual nature of God's dwelling place that we disregard what Peter is addressing here in verse five. Because here, Peter is talking about God's spirit, God dwelling in in this spiritual house that is being built up so with individual living stones. So there's a corporate nature to this dwelling place. He's talking about God building his church by turning dead hearts of stone into living hearts. And then God takes these living hearts. He takes these living stones and he gathers them into a spiritual house in which he dwells. So this is the picture that we're getting. So we see in other parts of the New Testament, God's spirit dwells in you as an individual. But here, and we'll look tomorrow at some other scripture that supports what Peter is talking about here. Here we see that God dwells in the corporate building made up of individual living stones. And that is absolutely amazing. I want you to see to just the amazing fact, the awe-inspiring fact that God has chosen you since 
even before the creation of the world to fit into this unique place in his spiritual house. You are a unique living stone chosen by God. And you fill a role and you fit a space that no one else who's ever lived, who lives now or who ever will live can fit. And I praise God for each one of you because here I think we're talking about mostly at this point, the universal church. But I also thank God for how each one of you fits into the local church that is Redeemer Church Cardiff. I praise God for each one of you, brothers and sisters. Let's pray. Father, thank you that before the creation of the world, you had in mind, you had this master plan for a spiritual house that would be built up of many individual living stones, and you had a place for each one of us who is in Christ. Thank you, Father, for that. God, help us today just to focus on the fact that we have been made like Christ. We are like living stones as he is the chief cornerstone, the living stone. God, help us tomorrow. Lord willing, just give us time tomorrow to see now what is the purpose of this building that you're that you're building what is what does it do what are and and how do we really fit into it we want to learn from your word and i pray that you would help us do that by the power of your spirit and i ask this in the precious name of jesus amen lord willing we'll be back at it again tomorrow finishing verse five getting in to verse six have a great day